Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the time has come. We are finally getting a new sniper on the 67 Chevelle. Holly sent us a Sniper 2 because they are phasing out the original snipers. Um, so we're going to put that install in, but first I'm going to show you, I've got to remove a whole ton of wiring and I'm going to show you why, but I'm going to show you the differences between the Sniper 1 and the Sniper 2. So I would have loved to have the one and the two next to each other so I could show you the differences side by side, but we had to send that one back to get this one. We don't have a spare around here, which is very odd that we don't have a spare sniper. Um, I'm also slowly going to start cleaning up the clutter because my OCD has hit its all-time limit. And I did make myself a little table for today, but I need a little table. I need my own little work area. I'm here only on the weekends, so I don't have everything I need, but it's time to make it that I do. So, let's go over the Sniper 2. Couple of the big differences. We'll go right off the bat. Let me face you down here. Um, so it mounts on the vehicle this way. That would be the front of the vehicle. Your linkage is on this side. The fuel inlet or outlet, doesn't matter which one, the fuel thingies are on the passenger side now instead of being on the rear. Also, there is no more internal fuel regulator like the Sniper 1 had. So, you have to do it one of two ways. You have to run uh, an in-tank pump with an in-tank bypass in it, which Holly makes for almost every single car, or uh, let me find it. They also give you a regular bypass regulator that I've already put our fittings in. So we're going to run, you can run your inlet fuel into either one of these, doesn't matter. And my outlet fuel is going to go into here, and then this is going to be my return back to the tank. Now I've got this one blocked off. You can also uh, double them both out to deadhead you can do all kinds of different things um, I just like doing a, a real quick easy inlet outlet regulator setup so next up on big things that are different uh, if you remember we're just gonna turn this around like as if it was a normal old-school sniper you had your two inlets say this is the back of the regular sniper and then you had your fuel crossover pipe or tube on the other side that is now internal there's no more external crossover. So whatever you choose to be your inlet, say I choose this one, it's going to fill this bowl, go through here, fill the next bowl. It's pretty, pretty standard on most carburetors and throttle body injectors and stuff like that. Um, let's see, other big differences here. Uh, the linkage is all different. Let me return this back over to the side, bump into my camera. So. Let's see if they No, it's still Still the same. So one of the biggest complaints they had with uh, Snipers was a very abrupt tip in and that's because the second you hit the throttle Both front and rear blades would open the same amount Instantly and that just put a lot of air in really fast. They did make an updated uh, rod that was a they called it the progressive rod that would allow the fronts to open a little bit before the rear started to open. Supposedly with this new design uh, throttle system they put in it, that eliminated all that. So we'll see. Uh, you've got your multiple different hookups up here for um, all your different throttle types and, and a Cleva style here. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is TH350 kick down cable. This is 700R4, 200R4 kick down cable um oh and now some of the big changes so this 
we used to have your flat four pin for your handheld. This is now your connector. Um, they also give you one that is on the main harness itself that I will show you in a minute. And that is to get some can signals because now you have can capabilities. Uh, your main connectors, let me get this wire out of here. You have one main connector coming off of the sniper now. Uh, before you had two, you had your one main connector, had all your battery power and your major inputs and your other one was all your accessory outputs like coil connection, um, fan connection, AC idle, uh, kick down or kick up, uh, how you like to say it. Um, that all is now uh, consolidated into the harness. This is just your all your main power stuff you need for the sniper throttle body itself. Because now, as I'll show you on the harness, your main connector plugs in here. Here's your, like I was saying, on the harness itself, there's a can output. And then on the harness, this six pin is now where your um, uh, fan wiring and all your optional outputs would be. Uh, they also put the uh, coil signal wire, which is your white wire on the old harness, still white wire on this harness, uh, down through further with your 12 volt ignition. You got your obviously black and reds power and ground on this harness. I guess you can get the harnesses now with or without this uh, fuel pump relay built in we got it with and then yellow we won't be using because we don't need a trigger signal but that's about the gist of it so they changed quite a few things supposedly all for the better <clears throat> another thing they did uh, with your connection is you get your 3.5 inch screen your 5.5 inch screen but now that they've got a I don't remember if they had it before for the old setup I don't think they do but there's a plug-in um, Bluetooth module so you can do everything on your phone now and not have to have a screen hooked up I guess we'll see uh, we didn't get that maybe on a future build we'll get that but enough about all that that's basically all of the I think everything I need to cover on this we'll be using a nice nice billet uh, throttle bracket and everything or is it it's aluminum. I don't know if it's billet. So we'll get all that in there because uh, I believe this is in a little bit different. It's in more of a traditional Holly carburetor uh, location and setup than before. It was more of a Rochester type deal or, you know, Q-Jet for you guys that don't know that aren't that old as me. But like I said, because I should have brought my light, um, the harness is different. I'm going to remove all the old poly harness um, fuel lines. We'll see what we got to do here now. So this is my supply. We can cut and make that work, and that's my return. So I think we're, we're pretty good. Uh, actually, both of them are right here, so we should be able to just right there to those. Um, still going to use the same coolant temp sensor, and that's really the only input. Um, also... What did I just see there? Oh, vacuum stuff. So, got your main vacuum right here for your brake booster and whatnot. You've got full manifold vacuum right here, 3 16 port. And on the front, you've got, I forget which one is which, but, uh, oh, obviously this one is going to be full manifold vacuum because it's down below the plate. And this one is timed vacuum if you're using a distributor that needs that. So, I mean, it's all, it's all still there. They just redesigned the entire thing. But uh, I'm also working on it over here. I was hoping it was going to be on a lift, but I guess not. So I'm going to start with removing all my old wiring. We're going to get this uh, bolted in. And then I'm going to hook up just the wiring I need for the sniper. And then see if that all powers up and is good. Because if you remember, we had issues with this. It had fried out another sniper unit. And according to Holly, our distributor is fine. But I'm going to hook everything up, just the sniper, not the distributor, not the hyperspark. None of that stuff is going to be wired into it just to make sure that's good. 
And then one by one, we'll start plugging that stuff in and make sure everything's good. Hopefully everything's good. So let me get to stripping some stuff out of here. Okay. Got the main Holly sniper wiring out. The HyperSpark stuff is still in there. I'm not touching that yet. Also put some gloves on. Also went and got my Fenway Park kid lights so I can actually see what I'm doing over here. Um, we're going to, oh, I'll show you real quick. So this is the difference now in your connectors. Before both of these came off of the sniper, now you just have the one main connector. And so this is my coil trigger wire and the blue is my fan control wire. Those are both in this pigtail now, which they give you somewhere. Did I take it out of the box yet? I did not. I don't think. I think it's in this little box inside the box. Yes. So that's this now, which I've already pulled most of my wiring out of. Um, I think the only two things I had to figure out was where our tack input is on this engine, because I don't remember. And then... Um, that's it. I'm I'm lost in thought here. Oh, that's why I'm lost in thought because I'm I'm gonna clean a ton of this. I am not happy with it. It's not up to my standards. So I'm gonna clean up all this wiring. I'm going to rewire. So we have electric fans, but they are both hooked up to one trigger wire. So anytime the fan comes on or the fan's commanded on, both of them are at high speed all the time. Now this vehicle doesn't have air conditioning, so super, super easy fan wiring. And there's no reason why I shouldn't do one of my um, three relay high speed, low speed setups on this. Cause nine out of 10 times, you don't need two fans running at a high speed. The, at low speed, when they're commanded on is enough to bring the temperature down to where it needs to be off on your thermostat cycling back and forth. So I'm gonna clean all that crap up. I'm actually going to take a look inside right now and see where what we have for gauges because I can't remember if this has Dakotas or not and uh, see if I can't figure out what is my tack input. Hey, 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 easy, easy mode. Uh, factory gauges, number one, no tachometer, number two. So this is super simple stuff. And I'm going to clean up all this stuff under here too. I'm just messing this is my achilles heel i don't like it i don't like the messiness um so yeah so that's awesome so i don't have to worry about attack wire or any of that and i couldn't remember because we this was a year and a half ago or so the last time i saw this vehicle so i don't i've done so many between here and work work that i it's hard to keep track of everything so all right let me lay the sniper down on top of this intake and um, start doing some mapping out of how I'm going to do stuff because I am not sure if where these the relay and the fuse breaks out of this harness if it's going to be the same length away as that one so we might have to move those I also instead of sheet metal screwing these in here I'm going to grab some riv nuts and riv nut those in there because that's just much better to do and then, like I said, we've got to figure out if I have to move that or not for my fuel pressure regulator mounting. Okay, problem number one. We didn't get far before I found one. So as you can see, that's obviously not sitting flush. The old Sniper 2, where it was kind of a Q-Jet setup, actually mounted more along these lines. And your bowls were off to the side, which did not interfere with this. This is your vacuum port that we're using on this car for over the brakes down to your um, vacuum valve on your transmission on this side. So what I'm going to do is actually pull this completely off, put a pipe plug in it because we are going to use the big one on the back here. Well, I can't really see stuff with those bright lights, huh? We're gonna use the two ports here for your, your brakes and for your vacuum valve for your transmission, because this is also a full manifold vacuum down here. Okay, what do I always say? Small victories. So we're in. So now I'm gonna start plugging some harnesses into the connectors on here, laying them out, seeing how they run, where they run, where I've gotta change stuff, yada yada. Ooh, 
I think uh, since the video of when I did the lift kit on the truck and came down here after work and further cannibalized the wheels off of my old truck, I don't think I showed you guys after the Monday after that I put the new wheels on. I like them. I actually like the whole truck. It's beautiful. It's exactly, it's kind of what I wanted that truck to look like, only fortunately the frame had other things to say. But yeah, thing's pretty badass. I'm happy with it. If it's not your cup of tea, that's cool. Just, I don't care. It's my cup of tea. I'm drinking from it. All right, turns out we've got more than enough slack to mount those back where they were and tuck the wiring neater behind the distributor. I'm still going to clean it up some. Just wanted to look through my instructions and figure out some stuff because I know the yellow wire is my coil negative input, which I'm not using because I'm using the HyperSpark and we're not using a coil. Or not, not to say not using a coil, but not using a coil trigger. It's all built into the HyperSpark. This right here is something I really want to use on one of the builds that we are going to do coming up. Their PDM module. Let me see if they got the picture in here. Where is it? Here. This is awesome. So what this is, is basically a uh, built-in relay block with um, LED telltales. You put your... Do they have? I thought they had one hole. There we go. Next one. There we are. This is this is my home. I love this this layout like this. Beautiful. Like I said, I'm a I'm an electrical. I'm a diagram guy. But you've got your main power in and your main ground in. Boom boom boom. Then everything that has to do with the Holly system is controlled off of this. All your inputs that come out of the Holly main harness go into one side. You can see your your outputs to go into your fan your outputs to go into your hyper spark your outputs to go into the fuel pump everything is right there it's amazing and if there's a fault you get a red light if everything's good you get a green light i love that that is awesome um, i'm hoping to do this in one of the trucks we have coming up if not if i can maybe finagle and find a good deal on a uh, c truck c10 to do my own little project. I'm definitely using one of these. Love it. But here you can see with the new connector style, you get your 3.5, your 5 inch, and then your Bluetooth module so you can do your stuff through your phone. Uh, Wideband 02. There we go. M8 CAN 1. So this is your main one that you set it up from that the handheld goes into. This is your CAN 2, which I haven't found out why yet besides they say some of the functions don't work but you can't plug your handheld into this connector uh, I'm gonna do some more homework on it and see blah 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 yada yada but yeah everything everything that comes out of there your your uh, fan trigger the only thing actually the only thing this doesn't have so you can control one fan trigger you can't control two fan triggers through this but what you have is 9 10 and 11 here let me see if you can see it without the glare. Those are optional switched uh, ground switch triggers. So it doesn't have a dedicated one, but I can use those to trigger a relay for my high-low setup for the fan. So, I mean, if they could integrate two in here for a high-low setup like that for fan triggers, this thing would be the balls. Right now it's pretty awesome, but it would be the balls if you could do that. So I'm going to un unwrap these two harnesses, run some stuff here. Oh, that's what I wanted to find out. So this yellow, um, do, 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 do. see, here it is right here. They use that for your trigger on your uh, coil negative side. Good thing about Holly instructions is they're pretty, pretty foolproof. Where is it? Uh, somewhere, maybe it was online I had it. So time and time and if you are not I forget where it is it's somewhere I'll find it eventually but if you're using the Holly the sniper to control timing you don't use that yellow trigger wire that's back there so I'm gonna get that out of the harness and then I'm gonna start laying everything out out 
out else else i don't know i'm having issues talking but at least i'm not coughing my brains out this week uh i'm gonna start laying everything else back down through the uh fender well like we had it and um figure out my last couple wires that i'm going to be taking out of this because now i know i don't need a tack wire okay so here we go so light green is my um ac kick up basically for when the ac comes on it raises the throttle don't need it because we don't have ac gray is my tack wire don't need it because we don't have a tack so literally all i need is fan control one and two which is this green with a white tracer and black with a yellow tracer okay preliminary check to see if anything's gonna friggin blow up again power and grounds hooked up over there i'm just going to touch my 12 volt ignition pink wire to the battery to simulate turning the key on <sighs> hopefully we don't hear any pops and fizzes Everything seems to be good. All right. So we are there. No calibration detected. Um, of course, because I'm not calibrated. I'm actually not going to calibrate this. I'm going to take this SD card into work and format it with uh, the current firmware first so I can actually tune this thing after. Um, all right. That's a good sign. So the sniper section of everything is good. So now I'm going to plug stuff in one by one. And see what the hell happens um, okay guys so as you can see we're still powered with no issues um, my hyper spark is wired crudely my coil trigger wire for the hyper spark is on there my distributors plugged everything is plugged in if I had the fuel pump wire hooked into my existing fuel pump wire and I had a calibration in here it should start um, this confuses me because my first thought was maybe they sent us back the repaired sniper and it just really wasn't repaired and it was still effed up. But if you remember, I took the other sniper out of the white C10 and it immediately fried that one too. So this makes no sense to me, but everything is good right now. So I'm just going to go with it. Apparently everything is correct. Uh, nothing is shorting out. That's just how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you don't get an answer. You just get a positive result and that's just it. All right, I am going to um, do some more routing and cleaning some wires. And I'm going to put a second relay in for my ignition power to everything. So it's all off of a switched relay. That's one thing Holly wanted us to do even though it doesn't have anything to do with it. And their instructions say you could just hook it right up to keyed ignition. You don't need to hook it up through a relayed source. I think they're assuming we're getting electrical noise, but we're not. So, all right, I'm gonna redo uh, some wire and run some stuff, clean up some stuff and uh, see what we can get today. Maybe I can get this thing fired up. We'll see. Um, I'd rather not put a tune in this yet because then I gotta move it out of it to redo the firmware and then re re import it in, but we'll uh we'll see. I don't know what a guy's gotta do to get some electrical tape around here. But apparently I'm not doing it. Alright. A little bit neater. Got my wires run up here power and ground for the sniper fan one and fan two this is my ignition power for the fan relay which i'll get into that in a minute this is like i said my uh trigger feed for my hyper spark this is my ignition power for the sniper this is the other side of that ignition wire i'm going to make a relay over here somewhere to do all of my ignition 12 volt switched ignition feeds off of that relay now I was looking in this area where there is not a lot of real estate to do my three relay setup. Now the other shop put in one of these 30 amp circuit breakers, cool. I had a fuse, fuse is good enough. Um, circuit breaker is decent, but 
where I am now going to change these from both being switched on high speed all the time to a low speed high speed, I will have three relays to mount and each relay or each fan is going to be controlled by a relay will have their own um, dedicated power wire. So what I think I'm going to do, instead of mounting them side by side like I usually do, I think I'm going to use this real estate here and do them vertically. And uh, that should save a lot of space, clean up a lot of stuff. Uh, this is, this is killing me. Don't, don't do all this. Please don't. And we, for some reason, used a regular crimp, not a crimp and seal that's out in the elements. And, uh, oh God, we used a crimp and seal here and didn't seal it. You know, soldering is always best with heat shrink, but a crimp and seal will work just as good. Um... Yeah, I'm going to redo all this because this is just horrible for me. I think we might get some of the battery terminals that we typically use that have studs on them so that I can mount everything. Um, is this just, yeah, this is just a single top post. This is why I like the top post with a side post battery, the Optimus we usually use, and there's a few other batteries that do them. Because I do my main powers, my two big main powers, off of the top posts. And all my accessories, I do off the side posts. And usually, I have the battery, so the side posts are on this side. So all that wiring is hidden in there. And not all spaghetti out here. Um, what do they got here? Oh, so we have a stereo in here, too. So that is my amp wire. I don't know what this one is that goes back into there. It's odd. What size fuse is it? 25? So if this is my amp wire... I don't know what that is, but I'll figure it out. But yeah, I'm thinking that's going to be my call, is my um, my fan relays are all going to go up and down this strip right here, make it much more neat, and uh, redo that wiring. And so I'm just going to truck on and continue just cleaning this wiring up little by little. I've got to undo these two connectors and flip this starter wire on the other side of these harnesses. And um, then I got to clean up this stuff. I'm going to use this right here. This is my old coil feed. So this is 12 volt uh, ignition on even while cranking. So that's going to be my turn on for the relay that does my ignition feed. And then my ignition feed is just going to be a 12 volt run over from here and then in through to all my ignition stuff. So the relay will be tripping that battery power on. Um, and I'm going to start messing with the fueling, I think, uh, I think I'm just going to cut and 45 degree AN fitting my supply on and I have to figure out where I'm going to put my uh, return because I have to figure out where I'm going to mount that fuel regulator. Let me, uh, let me do some playing around with that right now and see where I can move this. I think we put this here because if we put it here, it was too close to the hood. So let me figure some stuff out. All right, making some headway little by little. Um, everything's taking extra long just because I'm trying to redo it all and make it twice as nice. My input fuel line is done. I've decided back there is where the fuel regulator is going to go. Um, it's just no good real estate. And as this is an already existing project, I'm not going to rebuild the entire thing, even though I would like to. I'd actually like to put that module buried down in here so you don't see it and move the coil to a better location where it's a little bit more hidden but this should work good um this is going to be my return to the tank as it is now i'm just going to take that fitting off and put it onto here and then this is going to mount like this and this 90 degree is going to go down and into the back port of here and I got to go see what that was. All right, a little bit more of the wiring cleaned up. I still got a lot more to do. Um, got my supply line on. I don't know if I told you that already. Got my return line done. So I made this new piece of line. Comes off of here, goes down up. We mounted the regulator on the firewall right here. Not my most favorite choice, but it's where we have available real estate and we can't really move this stuff around. I'd like to just take this, hide it down in here, but we're not rebuilding this entire car. It's already an existing project, so we're just uh, 
doing what we need to do to get everything right on it. Um, so yeah, so the fuel is going to run up into the bowls, through to the back bowl, up into here, and then right there goes out this line back down to the tank. So we're going to prime the system up now and see, uh, hopefully I got no leaks. All right, hopefully if all my AN lines went nice and good and snug how they're supposed to, we shouldn't get any leaks. That's 60 pounds, so I'm going to key it off. I'm going to put it on one more time after that. I don't know if it's going to do it right away or I have to wait. Oh no, we're good. All right, so we seem to be building the 60 pounds of pressure. I don't see any leaks anywhere. We're going to prime it one more time. That's a loud fuel pump, let me tell you. Uh, let's see. Dry, 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 dry. Fuel system is done, or fuel system plumbing is done. Um, I'm going to actually try something, because I think if I hook up a couple of wires, do some temporary wiring, we, we might be able to get this thing to fire. Okay, let's see. Um... With everything jerry-rigged together, I'm going to hook up my power to my sniper here. Everything seems to be good. Nothing's smoking. Nothing's leaking. I'm going to crank it over, see if it starts. Make sure that's not stuck. Missing. What am I missing? I've got that hooked up. That's good. That's powered. Hmm. Huh. Let me do some troubleshooting, see if I got some spark. Well, I figured out what my problem was. So it's crank, crank, crank. No problem. So I checked my ignition while it was cranking. Totally awesome spark through there while cranking. I'm like, well, what the hell? I can hear it priming fuel. Am I out of fuel? So I take off my line to check for fuel. I have no fuel. And then it dawns on me. Oh, you got to be kidding me. So these are your two fuel lines you supply in your return. Now, you would assume the steel braided woven, actual braided one, this one, would be your supply. And this would be your return. Um, I assumed. I made an ass out of me and me. I should have checked it with Fuel Prime to make sure because it's reversed. This is my supply. So my supply was going to the return side of my regulator and just getting blocked off. Who the F does this? I didn't do it. This is why I like doing these things from start to beginning. I got a temporary solution in. Um, we are all hooked up now. I've got this 90 degree AN fitting. Uh, double a n in here because we don't have any straight so i'm not going to take this line off yet and put a straight on there to meet up with this straight until we get a straight in but um let's power it up and see if i got any leaks see if i get sprayed in the face with gas whoa whoa hey remember that time i forgot to tighten that fitting up there yeah be right back all right take two Yeah, it's better. Now you can hear it going through the return. Cool. Oh, and we got, we'll see if you can see the little bit of prime fuel that shoots out here. There we go. Oh, that's, uh, that's much better than before. All right, well, let me clean off all that gas around sparking surfaces back there, and then we'll see if this thing fires up again. Take four. Okay, so let me just make sure this camera's not going to fall. Pretty sure we're good and we're not going to catch on fire now, so let's on the system. 
Oh. Let me go crank it over. and it runs good so that's good um, so my list of small stuff <coughs> to take care of so I have to get my three relays for my fan system my one relay for my 12 volt ignition to everything um, and then wiring wise besides cleanup it's done I have to get I think I only have one yeah I'm missing one of my carburetor uh, hold down nuts, so I have to have him get me one of those. I'm gonna put the throttle bracket stuff on right now, and um, then it's just a bunch of cleanup. Um, like I said, I'm not happy with the state of this engine bay, but I will make it as clean as we possibly can within the budget we are working with. Okay, so here's where I'm at. I've spent about another hour. I wonder how I look in this light. Um, screwing with stuff for throttle linkage and whatnot. My kick down cable is perfect. And it was making no sense to me that my throttle cable, if I got it to get a full 100% pull, it would release it down to 40% and stay there. And vice versa, if I um, adjusted it all the way so the throttle blades were closed, full throttle would only get me about 60%. Turns out, um, where's my light? I did not realize that this car has this goofy ass um, aftermarket pedal with some really weird fulcrum design down on the firewall instead of having the stock style pedal. And that is what my limiting factor is. So I have to, I actually went down there. It has the same kind of adjustment on here down on the pedal itself. So I went down there to try to adjust it to see if I could get some more throw out of it. And the um, pedal throw is what it is. It's not enough throw to open this all the way. And that's how it's been. So this guy, through whatever carburetor was on here before, the second or the first sniper, and now this sniper, he's only had about 60% throttle this entire time. Um, so this is going to be a totally different animal for him once I figure out how I'm going to make this thing get 100% throttle pull. But um, that is about it for today, I think. I'm... Uh, Put a good uh oh, who's texting me nobody i put a good uh what time is it 138 put a good six hours in seven hours on my day off everybody loves to do that um so what we'll have to i'll have to figure out during the week i'm going to look up the make and model of that pedal and see what i can figure out but um big vacuum line small vacuum line and then uh just clean up all this wiring and, and during the week at work I'm going to make my fan relay block so I can get those all done and um, that'll be it this thing is be ready to go back to the customer um, I did a short I don't know if I did a video for uh, good old sunshine over here we have gotten the paint in for sunshine so Noah has stripped it back down because now it's time to uh, final sand everything and then paint it and then i've got to start working on the front accessory drive stuff when uh before he gets the radiator core support back on hopefully because that'll just make it easier for me but here's all his paint and his solvent and all that stuff and is this the yellow i don't know i don't think no this is the white so the bottom half of this truck, somewhere in here, I'll put a picture of the original 
paint job on this truck because it's getting it back again and I think Joe said he's doing all the original trim too. The bottom of this truck is painted in Wimbledon white. The top is in Yucatan yellow or I think they call it Yucatan gold. That is this color right here. He sprayed a test panel to uh, see how it looked and it's a super nice color. Much like the um, the Cordova orange that the 69 F100 was, this is a somewhat rare color. Super, super expensive color, but uh, this yellow top, white bottom with all the factory trim back on this truck should put that back down. Make this truck quite the showstopper. And that's it. So remember, like and subscribe. We're almost back. We're almost back to our normal building show trucks, auction trucks that could be show trucks. And then uh, we've got that 70 Ford F100. We've got the 70 C10, which you guys haven't even seen yet because Joe hasn't brought that down here. It's been at his shop at his house. Um, that's on a no limit chassis. It's LS 4L60, I believe. Uh, Holly Terminator. Uh, beautiful truck. Already painted. Chassis already powder coated. Um, it's got a ton of stuff. It's, it's going to be a really nice truck. It's going to be like um, Chili Pepper 2.0, basically. Just not red. Here we go. Your, uh, your day for. Uh, for me today consisted of this we'll give you we'll give you one last start up we'll get this out of here so it doesn't hook on the uh what do you call it on the fan belt <laughs>